All right, so now that you've had a chance to see what, um, what the different tasks were, or different experiments uh, from lab today, I want to go through the results that, um, that you should have expected to find. And so uh, this first experiment is we're looking at diffusion, and this is with the starch and the iodine, where you take a baggie of starch and you, uh, or yeah, a baggie of starch solution and then iodine on the outside. And here we're testing the effect of molecule size on the rate of diffusion. And so the hypothesis that I propose is that small molecules diffuse faster than large molecules. And so, um, and so with this uh, setup, we've got iodine is a very small molecule. It's literally two atoms attached to each other, whereas starch is a very big honking molecule. And so if we have starch on the inside of the dialysis tubing and iodine on the outside, which of these is going to diffuse faster? Both of them are going to slowly diffuse across this membrane, but which is going to be faster? If small molecules diffuse faster than large molecules, then we would expect iodine to diffuse faster than starch does. So um, when starch and iodine meet together, when the iodine reacts with the starch and turns purple, when they meet together, and so if iodine is going to be diffusing into the tubing faster than starch can diffuse out, then we are going to see um, that purple coloration where they meet that we're going to see inside the dialysis tubing because the iodine can move in faster than the starch moves out. So we're going to see that purple first inside of the, uh, inside that dialysis tubing kind of cell, if you would. So that's the first experiment. The second experiment is um, looking at osmosis and the diffusion of water. And so, um, so as you saw in this experiment, you have a tub uh, filled with water. And um, I think in, in the video, they, they had a sucrose water or a sucrose solution that the tub was in. Um, but let's say we're using water that these three um, dialysis tubes are floating in. Now, one of the tubes has water in it as well. So water on the inside, water on the outside. One of them has 10% sucrose and the other has 25% sucrose. And so you are measuring the change in weight over time every five minutes for 45 minutes. So what would you expect to find? Well, if you have water on the inside and water on the outside, then we shouldn't expect to see much of a difference, right? Because there is no concentration gradient, so water is not going to uh, diffuse through um, in, in any net way. However, we would expect to see a, a, um, a change in these sucrose solutions. So if you put 25% sucrose inside of a bag and there's water on the outside, then the then osmosis is where w the water molecules inside the bag are quite busy being bound up with all that sucrose. So there's not a lot of free water molecules inside the bag relative to outside. And so water is going to flow inside the bag and we'll see an increase in the weight of that bag over time. 10% uh, sucrose is going to be the same kind of thing, but just at a smaller scale than 25%. And so in lab, um, we ask you to, to graph the results that you have of that weight. So here's an, an example of this would be like, this is really idealized uh, results, where here we have time on the x-axis and the weight of these bags on the y-axis. So in an, an idealized world, that water bag is going to have the same weight the whole time. The 25% sucrose bag is going to be gaining weight as water is, is entering into the cell to try and counteract uh, the sugar that's in there. And 10% uh, sucrose, you'd see the same kind of a thing, but not as fast because the concentration gradient is not as great. 
So these are the results that, that you should expect to find. And um, hopefully that makes sense as you're thinking through, um, doing a bit of the mental gymnastics of, all right, if there's a lot of solute, then that means that, that there's not a lot of water. So if there's not a lot of water on the inside, then water's gonna flow down its gradient and, and hopefully you can work through that logic. Uh, we also in lab uh, looked at the uh, taking these plant cells um, from these that little aquatic plant, Elodia, and exposed that those uh, leaves, one of which to distilled water, one of which to a low salt. Uh, this is 0.9% sodium chloride, which is isotonic. It's about the concentration of, of salt in a, in a natural healthy plant cell versus high salt, a 30% sodium chloride, which is the hypertonic solution. And uh, so then you're observing what happens to the cells under the microscope. So what you should be able to see is that in normal cells, um, in, in that nice isotonic solution, when you look at these cells under the microscope, you can see these chloroplasts are all throughout each of the cells. Um, the cell's nice and filled. The, uh, this, the plasma is, is filling up this entire cell, and you can see these chloroplasts are nice and dispersed throughout. However, you put that cell into a salt water solution, then if you have lots of salt on the outside of the cells, relatively lower salt on the inside, then water is going to diffuse out of the cells into the solution to try and balance it out. And as, that, um, as the cytoplasm of this cell loses water, that whole cell is actually going to start to shrink up. So here you can still see the cell walls. The cell walls are, are rigid, and so they're not gonna move. However, within each of the cells, you can see all the chloroplasts and all the other organelles and everything else in the, in the, within the membrane gets uh, shrunken into kind of the middle of each of the cell walls. And this is called plasmolysis, when these cells shrink up like this in, uh, in plant cells. So this white here that you see on the outside, this is just the white light from the microscope that is shining up through the bulb, through the slide, through the cell, and, um, and into uh, the camera in this case, or your eye. So this white space here is just empty space because the, the entire cell has, has shrunken up from losing water due to the salty water around it. All right, and then lastly, um, uh, you can also look at sheep blood, where we're doing the same kind of a thing, um, putting that blood under um, uh, distilled water, isotonic or hypertonic, and, and those cells will shrivel up um, in, in uh, let's see, they'll shrivel up when water has to leave, and it's going to leave because it's salty. So uh, they will shrivel up in a hypertonic solution, where it's salty, and in distilled water, they will burst and explode. And so those are the results from lab today. Um, hopefully being able to see things helps you to, or see things on the video, helped you to kind of get an idea of, of how things worked. Um, but really, I think the most important thing is understanding the concept and the theory of how diffusion works, what drives it, how osmosis works, and how these things are working uh, across cell membranes. So hopefully that is um, that's clear to you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or stop by my office whenever you see my door open. Thanks.